Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial about TIA portal. Until now, we have designed some HMI screens with basic elements and objects. In this video, we'll see a practical project about PLC programming and HMI designing, and also how the project can be extended easily. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Let's have an overview. This is the industrial automation pyramid. As you know, we can use factory I.O. to simulate our industrial process. In this video, we're going to control the liquid level of this tank, which has two electrical valves and a level sensor. Also, we'll use a virtual PLC to simulate our program. We'll use HMI for monitoring. We can simulate the designed HMI too. As you know, the TIA portal is the basic software to program the PLC, design HMI screen, set their connection settings, and also extend the project. That's wonderful, we'll do all these on our computers, without any hardware. First, let's test the project. Here, we have this tank, which is connected to this virtual PLC. And also this is the designed HMI, which has three screens. We can see time, date, and PLC goods logo on the main screen. Here, we can add other information. Let's go to the tank 1 screen. In this screen, the first tank liquid level is controlled. This tank has two control types. Manual and automatic, let's test the manual mode. With the fill button, we can turn on the filling valve. Also until the discharge button is pressed, the discharging valve will be opened. And always, the liquid level is shown based on percent. Let's go to automatic mode. When this mode is selected, the screen will be changed a little. Here, we can enter the desired level. Let's write 80%. So. The filling valve will be opened, until the liquid level reaches the desired level. As you see, when the level reaches 80%, the filling valve is turned off automatically. Here. If I click on the discharge button, it makes to turn on the discharging valve, until I click on that again. When the liquid level goes under 80%, the filling valve will be opened automatically. Now. We're going to explain this project, after that, we'll extend this project to two tanks. Alright, we have this tank with these analog valves and level sensor, which are connected to my virtual PLC with these input-output addresses. In TIA software, we have a PLC and HMI, which are connected together. Let's see the PLC program tags. Here, we have a bit of memory, which determines the auto manual mode. Then, two bits of memory are used to turn on valves. These bits are activated by HMI buttons. 
Next tags are level sensor input, digital displayed memory to store level liquid base on percent, and two analog outputs respectively filling and discharging valves. As you know, here we can see general information about the PLC program. And also we can see input, output, and memory addresses. Here, we can check is there any cross-reference between addresses. Alright, let's see the PLC program. Here are some functions, which are called from the main block. In the first network, this function is used to connect the virtual PLC to factory I.O. Like previous projects. In the next network, this function gets the level sensor signal from the PLC input, then converts and stores that base on percent, at this PLC memory. For this conversion, a norm and scale instructions are used, like previous projects. Well, the main part is in the third network. Here is a function for manual mode, and a function block for automatic mode. The manual function program is simple. When the fill button is pressed on the HMI screen, this number will be moved to PLC output, to generate 10 volts to open the filling valve. Similarly, the discharging valve can be opened. Alright. This function block has been used for automatic mode. Because its program needs a data block to store, and use desired level liquid value, unlike manual function. So. If we have another tank, we can use this function block with another data block. Let's see its logic. In the first network, the discharge valve logic, has been told in the manual function. The next network is related to the filling valve. When the level liquid is greater than the desired value, the filling valve will be close, otherwise, it will be open. The main point is, the desired level parameter, which has been defined here. Its initial value is 50%. This parameter will be stored on the related data block, and can be changed by the HMI. This logic can be used for other tanks, but we must use another data block, to store the desired level for each tank. Now, let me explain the HMI part. As you see, this screen has a green arrow. So, the HMI, starts its work with this screen. If we click here, another screen will be added. Now, here are three screens. We need to navigate between them. To do that, we can insert buttons, and use activate screen function, in their event tab. Let me show you. Here, in the screen menu, select activate screen. Now, we can select desired screen. Now, let's go to the tank screen. This switch determine control mode, 
which is connected to manual auto memory of the PLC tag. Here is a simple bar which is connected to digital display memory. Behind the bar, the tank graphic has been inserted from the right list. Also, this simple blue rectangle will be shown if the filling valve is open. Pay attention, the filling valve is analog, and based on the PLC program, it will be open, if the related address is between 1 to 27648. Alright, as you see, when a valve is open, its graphic color will be blue. We can this ability with graphic lists, which has been explained before. For example, for the discharging valve, this is the connected PLC tag, and this is its graphic list. Here, we can create and manage our graphic lists. If you want to use this graphic list for a button, you need to change its properties like me. Now, let me show you another technique. Create a copy from the fill button, then place that on the fill valve, and then select invisible at its properties. Now, let's test the screen. As you see, if I click on the filling valve graphic, the valve will be open. Alright, here are some elements which are placed on together. When we switch between manual and automatic mode, appropriated elements will be visible. You have learned how to change elements visibility before. Here, we have used manual auto PLC tag to determine each element visibility. Now, let's extend the project. First, let me insert another tank. Then its valves and level sensor must be connected to the virtual PLC. To modify the PLC program, we can use previous functions for the new tank, but their input-output must be modified. Here, I must change the function input. The second level sensor is connected to IW34. And also I must use another memory to store the liquid level of the second tank.
I can enter new addresses, or use new tags which I have defined before. Here, pay attention to function and function block difference. We can use previous function block logic for the second tank, but we must change its data block. Because each tank has its specified desired level. In the same way, we can use the thank1 screen for new tank. But we must modify their tags. For example, we must modify this bar tag to the new PLC memory address, which is used to store liquid level. All right. After modifying new tags for the second tank, here we have two tanks, and each tank can be controlled by the HMI. Alright, if you have real PLC or HMI, try to do the previous simulation, with your devices, like me. Alright, in the next video, we're going to see other HMI abilities, like defining password and alarm screens. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.